Expeditions the Pit will bring plenty of new content to explore, but what about rare dedicated rewards? Well, there are dozens of them under a new loot pool system. Let me show you everything. Hello, hello everyone! Welcome back to another Fallout 76 video. In this overview, I will go over the pit rare rewards and their costs, which went live a few days ago on the public test servers on PC. They are sold by Giuseppe, a new vendor who sells exclusively the pit plants, for now at least. I will also explain how stamps work, how to get them and how their drop rates work as well per expedition. This is a new currency required to purchase any plants from Giuseppe, by the way. Moreover, I created a few charts to give you guys an idea how much farming and how long it will take to acquire all these new goodies, among a few other things. Alright then, let's dive into the details. <laughs> The pit expeditions are said to bring a new wave of rewards to 76, but what can you get exactly? Well, first of all, you can get the basic direct rewards every time you complete an expedition. This includes some experience, a fixed random 1 to 3 stars legendary, stamps, a new currency, we will talk about it in a bit, as well as ammo for the weapon you use during the expedition, random grenades and other utility and aid items. I know it's not much, especially if you compare it to Daily Ops, where things are much shorter and you get a lot more. Now, I know what you are thinking. That's really it. Yeah, from direct rewards, you don't get much. I mean, I did see Bethesda saying you can get one rare reward from the pit per week. And then later, the data miner guild post said players can earn 1000 score and one rare reward from the non-mods list, such as the truck tube or the skippy's outfit. Other than that, you don't get anything else directly. For the second rewards pool though, you need to head to Giuseppe, he's the new expeditions vendor and he is introducing a new looting pool system. Let's go over it now. Giuseppe is about to become a popular guy this fall, since he's selling all the good stuff from the pit. Now, this vendor is located inside the White Spring Resort, now called the White Spring Refuge, home to the responders. You can directly fast travel inside through the map. Also, if you are new to the responders return, feel free to check my other video about it. Now, Giuseppe set store near Bubbles, the Nuka Cola vendor, so he's quite easy to spot. Follow my path in the footage if you are not sure how to find him. It's at the stuffed room past the bar to the left side. Currently, Giuseppe sells the pit rear plants, as you can see, and they are very expensive. That's definitely the main con, but there are many pros about this system. First of all, you can get any new plants you want in whichever order you prefer. Secondly, there is no more RNG dictating the rules or blocking you from getting your favorite new plants. And third, you will never get duplicates again with this system. Now, let's take a closer look at the rewards. Giuseppe offers you 35 new plants, but this pool will surely increase in the future as Bethesda introduces new missions and further rewards. Anyway, at first glance, it might look like there's a lot of new stuff to get, but the majority are just mods. I retrieved some data mine images of the upcoming rewards, such as the Danilo and Skippy cosmetics. They are matching heads as well, so it's pretty cool. They are sets. There's also the Pittsburgh Street Kit with several items and the Fanatic Barricade, the Truck Tube and many others. Some are still missing here, but I tried my best to get as much footage as I could to give you guys a small preview. Moving forward, I also organized the long rewards list into charts and I ended up with only 12 new rare plants, which are items. The other 23 are mods for the upcoming Union Power Armor and the Auto Axe. Talking about those, in case you are wondering, they are supposed to be free rewards part of season 10, according to the data miners. That's why they are not listed anywhere in the game yet. Now, let's talk about how to get these new plans using stamps. The new rule to unlock the pit rewards is simple, farm stamps and buy what you want from Giuseppe, but now the question is how to farm stamps? Well, every time you complete an expedition you always earn some stamps, but the value is not always the same. Not really. I will go in depth with the stamps rates next, for now let's focus on some expeditions limitations, 
which drastically condition your ability to farm stamps. First of all, Bethesda is only allowing players to start one expedition per day, which means running your own journey and dictating rules can only happen once daily. Now, this doesn't mean you can't join other players' expeditions as much as you want or can, but it's not the same. A lot could go wrong. I actually saw a few reports already of players claiming they got kicked off teams or leaders rushing the primary objective while ignoring everything else. So for now, it looks like farming under ideal conditions is quite restricted. Running your own expeditions once per day is not much, especially if you consider the stamp requirements for the new plans. In order to farm stamps, players must complete expeditions as mentioned earlier, but how many stamps can you get from one single expedition? Well, the answer is, it depends. There are three main factors which influence the total amount of stamps you can earn per expedition. I even created this infographic to simplify the entire process. The first one is a fixed and permanent rule, completing the primary objective unlocks one stamp, always. Now this one is a must-do to complete the expeditions, so I would say one stamp is the minimum you can get. The second rule is your team status. As a leader, you always earn two bonus stamps as compensation for delivering the ultra cell battery to launch an expedition. As such, for team leaders, their default stamp earning per run is always three stamps, one from the primary objective and two for being a leader. The third and last factor is about optional objectives, which increase your stamps drastically, but it's still not very clear about how many stamps each optional objective can provide. According to the data miner Gilpu, optional objectives don't all have the same stamp rewards. In in fact, there seems to be a tier for each of the optional objectives. As a non-leader, if you do just the primary goal, you get one stamp. Then for two objectives, you get two stamps. Then three equals five stamps. And finally, if you complete all four objectives, you unlock eight stamps in total. If you are a leader, you receive two more. So for now, it seems like the maximum you can get per expedition is 10 stamps. That seems to be the limit, but as I said, it's not not 100% sure and we are in a very early phase so anything could change. If you feel a bit confused let me give you some concrete examples. In this expedition we completed the main objective and one optional plus I was the leader therefore I received four stamps. My teammates received only two though. In this other case the player received three stamps for completing the main goal and for being the leader. In this last case, the player completed three objectives, which unlocked the tier three stamped rewards, aka five stamps, plus two stamps for being the leader. As a result, the player got seven stamps in total. Well, if you wish to get the most out of each expedition stamp-wise, you really need to work towards completing these tiers and unlock eight stamps at least, or 10 if you are the team leader. All right, now let's talk about the stamp requirements for rewards. As you probably noticed by now, the new P3 rewards are quite expensive. That's the price of freedom in the end. In average, each plan costs around 100 stamps. Now, if you consider there are currently 32 plans and the maximum you can get per expedition is only 10 stamps, things are not looking too hot over here. But let's move on to some concrete data. I decided to make a chart to understand how much and for how long would you need to farm in order to put your hands on the entire pit collection. I started by summing up the total amount of stamps you need to buy all the 32 plants from Giuseppe. It's a beautiful amount of 3,970 stamps. Well, Good luck with that. Now the question is, how long would it take to farm 4,000 stamps and unlock all these rewards? Uh, too long, that's for sure. I don't want to scare you just yet, since these values are likely going to change. They are not realistic to start with, and we are right at the start of the expedition's PTS, so anything could and will most likely change. However, if these values stay as they are or close, here are the numbers. I calculated average stamp gain per day, starting with one stamp per day and ending with 100 stamps per day. I know the last one is not very likely to happen, but you never know if you do expeditions 24 7 
you might be able to get close. Anyway, the goal of this charge are to give you guys an idea of how far demanding expeditions will or can be. All right, now let's get into some practical cases. Let's say you only complete one expedition per day and focus on the main mission as I did. I only did one optional objective and I ended up with four stamps as the leader. If I farm four stamps per day as average, I would need about 992 days to unlock everything the pit has to offer me. That's only three years. No big deal, right? <laughs> yeah. Now, if you complete all the optional objectives and farm an average of, let's say, 10 stamps per day, you would need around 400 days to unlock the entire list. I know it's still too much, but one year is not exactly as bad as three. <laughs> if you are impatient, you probably want to run several expeditions per day and farm at least 20 to 50 stamps a day. That will cut your farming days by a lot. With an average of 20 stamps per day, you need about 200 days. At 50 stamps, you only need 80 days to get everything. I guess it all comes to how much time, patience and dedication you want to invest here. <laughs> Still on the topic of stamp requirements, I also calculated the farming time for known mod plants in case you're only interested in the brand new items. For the specific 12 plants, here's the list again in case you missed it. To get them all, you need a total of 1,975 stamps. It's a bit more attainable, but still quite hard to get. It's not like you're going to get 2k stamps overnight. Heh, <laughs> you never know, maybe glitches will find a way to get there. Anyway, if you farm an average of 10 stamps per day, you need 197 days to unlock all the non-mod stuff. If you aim high, like 20 stamps per day, you can get them all in about 100 days. If you are even more ambitious at 50 stamps per day, you can unlock everything, the 12 plants, in just 40 days. But yes, I know not everyone can or wants to farm expeditions 24-7, so that's probably not going to happen to many people. For a casual farming of 4 stamps per day, you would need 494 days still it's insane. It's going to be the next never-ending grind feast, I have no doubt about that. With these values in mind, I really think expeditions will quickly become a tedious activity for several groups of players. It's going to be a grind feast for everyone, there is no denying, but for casual players, solo players and new ones as well, it's like all hell will get loose. If you are a casual player, you probably won't be able to farm more than one or two expeditions per day. If you prefer solo, things will also get complicated since completing optional objectives will become really time-consuming, resulting in less stamps per run and you are limited to one expedition per day. As for new players or low gear players, yeah, it's not so easy to meet your goals in the pit. So they must rely on other players for their stamp farming. Overall, optional objectives can be troublesome to do as a full team, even more for one single player. Can you imagine one single player searching the entire map alone? Yeah, it's not fun and it can get really, really hard. For example, in this run, we all try to find the lost supplies and after some 15-20 minutes searching every corner we could possibly get to, we just gave up, we couldn't find it. So yeah, in behalf of these groups, I think Bethesda should care more about their player base specifications. Last I checked, 76 is not a competitive game and the majority of the player base is extremely casual. So these numbers are really not going to to do any good to the game in my view. In general, I think these stem costs are fairly high, maybe for endgame players or for veterans it's not extremely high, but in general I think it is. I could farm it all day long, but do I want to? It's not like everyone can spare hours every day for expeditions farming alone. I think the system needs a touch of reality in this regard. Anyway, when it comes to currencies and such reward pools, it's all about balance and right now there is very little balance with this reward system. If they don't want to touch values, then introduce a new way to get or trade stamps. And yes, I know, one can argue or defend the actual system by using the choice element. You can now choose what to buy instead of relying on the RNG element. So paying a high price for that is totally fine, I understand, but 
to this extent? Is it really? Plus, with so little stamps per expedition and this one rule where only one expedition can be launched per player per day, it makes things really restricted. I'm not looking forward to farm 3k stamps over years if I can only manage to complete a few expeditions per day. Moving forward, considering that a huge part of the 76 player base is casual, I'm not so sure you guys will be overly excited about this concept. I mean, you need ears to unlock all the new rewards if you don't exhaustively farm expeditions expeditions every day for several hours. It's not fun, it will be a grind competition, a time sink with no end basically. So for the sake of everyone and for the sake of the game itself, I hope developers rethink their strategy here and rebalance the rewards cost or the stamp drop rates one thing or the other or even create an alternative way to obtain stamps and make things a bit more realistic. Lastly, I think the pit rewards look interesting and it's surely refreshing to have this sort of freedom to choose what you want to get first, but I'm not going to lie, I was expecting more. There is literally no new gear yet as part of Giuseppe's plans, there are mods, yes, but no base gear. Apparently season 10 will introduce new the pit gear plans for everyone for free, so that's a plus. I'm talking about the auto axe and the union power armor, but I'm not sure we should expect a lot more. So far data miners confirmed these two gear pieces, but I don't think there will be more, at least not for now. Maybe in some months they will introduce something else. But right now, I think that's all there is. As for the cost, yes, I think it's too high, but I doubt these values are definitive, so let's wait and see how things progress. But as they should and most likely will make things a bit more realistic according to player feedback. Anyway, what do you think? Let me know your thoughts on the pit rewards as well as their current costs. Thanks for watching and that's everything from my end. I am Marty Branco and I will see you all in the next video. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe to help the channel grow. And as per usual, a huge thanks to all my dear supporters. You guys rock. Take care everyone. I will see you all very, very soon. Until then, take care. Adios. Bye bye.